This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I am not Pastor Caleb. <laughs> so for anybody who is joining us that isn't here normally or joining us online, um, I'm sorry that last week we weren't able to broadcast Pastor Caleb's last um, worship service with us. But we are praying for his family and hope that this new chapter of their lives is going well and um, will feed their souls as well as the lives of those they touch. Our children are not in the sanctuary with us right now, or at least most of them, because they are downstairs making the communion bread for our worship service today. Um, I'm very excited. Marka Warner and Carolyn Larrick are downstairs and they are making the bread and they will be bringing it back up um, in time uh, when the offertory comes forward so that it will be on our communion table when that starts. Um, do we have any minute for missions right now? Go ahead. Um, Luke's offering this morning go to uh, uh, Mayfield. Um, we're going to be doing that the first of every month. And then I have other things about the, um, the sale. Oh, come up, give us a link. <laughs> they won't be able to Go hear you. the bite. Is that like going to my room? Mm -hmm. No. The yard sale planned for Saturday um, is, in need, is in need of a lot of help. We have some uh, volunteers already scheduled for that day, but if anyone is available to join Brittany after church today, to help sort and organize, please, please, please come down. Um, if you have any time Saturday that you would be able to come and help, we do have some folks scheduled, but we could certainly use more. Um, we are having a bake sale that day. Everything has to be packed individually, like uh, three cookies and a, and a glad bag or whatever. Um, if you have any questions about that, contact Jody. Did I get it all? <laughs> okay. And then Tuesday afternoon, there are going to be people. Uh, Jody's going to be down uh, starting at 11. Um, bring your lunch and plan to spend some quality time with Jody and the junk in the basement. Thank you, Dama. My voice is not what it normally is. <laughs> Um, I started not feeling well on Tuesday. I think it's allergies, so I'm really glad it's raining today. So I hope you will excuse me if at any point you see me popping in a cough drop or sipping some tea under my chair. I mean, no disrespect. And I want to give a big thanks to everybody who's offered words of encouragement. Um, Help me with my message this week. Pastor Tara, Pastor Caleb, all the gentlemen who have volunteered to be part of the service today. Um, Mike, who's prepared our communion liturgy for us, and Dawn and Dave and Dick are going to help read the gospel lesson today because it's a long one, and they are going to do some voices for us. So hopefully it brings the gospel a little more alive to you all today. So if there are any other aren't any other announcements, then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship and our call to worship. Please stand in body or in spirit as you are able. Join me in the call to worship. O oh Lord our God, we praise you. We praise you for help and you answered us. You have restored our lives. You have rescued us from the grave. Please join in singing hymn number 90, O oh, Worship the King, All Glorious Above.
who heals our brokenness, who lifts up from the pit and restores our lives. Let us confess our sin. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord God, in the light of your glory, we see the evil we have done, the suffering we have caused, the good we have refused, and the truth we have denied. Heal us of our sin, wash us of your mercy, and feed us with your grace, so that we may follow your way and tell the good news of the gospel. Amen. Please take a moment for your own silent confession. Rise up from the dust, cast off the shroud of sorrow, and put on the joy of the Lord. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please take a moment to greet your neighbor. Please be seated. We'll have our special music now.
beautiful. Let's bow our heads for the prayer of illumination. O God of light, by the power of your Holy Spirit, restore our sight, that in these words of scripture and sermon, we may see Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is John 21, 1 through 19, and we are going to do a different and interactive reading today, aren't we? Could I call Dave Bennett and Dawn, there he is, Dawn up to the front? Listen for God's word. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, We will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing a net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took bread, gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they were finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed the lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. When I was young, my dad used to take my sister and I fishing. And these are good memories. The three of us would go out on Seneca Lake and we'd hop in a simple bass boat. Most of the time, the sun was shining, 
the water was cool to the touch, and there was a gentle breeze. And yes, it smelled like fishy water, which bothered us at first, because teenage girls will talk about that. But we got used to it, and it was peaceful. We would motor out to a point where we would start to cast, but we had to discuss first what it was going to be take to be declared the bass master of a day. Now, for those of you who don't know, when I was young, there were two fishing shows on TV. There was Bill Dance Outdoors, and there was Bass Masters. And they interrupted Saturday morning cartoons. So sometimes we had to watch them, and not willingly. And then we got to like them, and they were hypnotic. But the title Bassmaster was one given to the top fisherman of the day. So this prestigious title went within our family circle. And we would discuss whether it would take catching the first fish, or the last fish, or the biggest fish to earn the title of Bassmaster. And when we won it, we lorded it over the other two a lot. We'd go home and we would brag. But there were days when we caught nothing. And we would go home and mom would notice no one was bragging about being the bass master. And it was at that point she would ask us, and in a stroke of genius, my dad once declared... We went boating. We didn't want to go fishing today. If we wanted fish, I'm sure we would have caught some. <laughs> and the good fishing buddies that we were, Teresa and I, would chime in and back him up. Nah, we didn't want to catch anything. In our gospel reading today, Peter and six other disciples decided to go fishing. Fishing was a little different today compared to what it is and what I've known now. First, they fish with nets, not rods and reels. And secondly, they typically fished at night rather than in the day. This helped to avoid the, ski, the scorching heat of being on the water, and the fishing nets were made of linen. So the fish would be light, less likely to notice that they were fishing or swimming into a net if it was in broad daylight, because daylight was used to sort the catch and to take it to market. I love that John's gospel closes with this fishing story. Because when Simon Peter is first called to follow Jesus, it was when Jesus first performed a miracle just like this one. Simon had been fishing all night, and he caught nothing. And he was coming ashore, and after taking note that he had caught nothing, Jesus directed Simon to throw his net, and he caught the mother load. And it was after that initial miracle that Jesus called Simon and Andrew and James and John to become fishers of men. And they did. It had to have been an amazing journey for those first disciples, following Jesus while he walked the earth, seeing firsthand the miracles he performed, the hearts he changed, the people he cured and even some he brought back from the dead. Knowing they physically had Jesus with them likely gave those first disciples a certain sense of peace. Like the peace of starting out fishing on calm water. So we can also only try to imagine the trauma that must have been felt by Simon Peter and the other disciples when in a matter of mere days, the one they knew and loved to be the Messiah went from riding triumphantly into Jerusalem on a donkey to shouts of Hosanna, to being arrested and beaten and crucified. Out of fear, Simon Peter denied Jesus three times. And when Jesus appeared to the disciples for the first time after the resurrection, they were hiding in a locked room. They were scared the high priest would be calling for them to meet a similar fate. So really it's understandable that after going through all of that, that Simon Peter and some of the others who used to be fishermen would find a night on the water to be a good idea. It would have been familiar and comforting to not have to think for a while. 
And yet, despite being out all night, they didn't catch a thing until Jesus showed up. And he gave them his instructions. Their nets went from empty to overflowing because they listened to him. When they first met him, he was a stranger on the shore. And this time again, they didn't recognize him. He was just a stranger on the shore asking them, have you caught anything? The disciples come to shore and they have some breakfast with Jesus. And I love this moment because Peter's restored. The Lord asks him three times, do you love me? It's like he gets to erase the three times he denied him. So if he had not been able to that point to forgive himself for denying Jesus three times, he got his chance. But Jesus gives him further instructions, a calling to feed his lambs, tend his sheep, and feed his sheep. And finally, follow me. Peter was being called not to go back to old habits, to his former trade as a fisherman. Jesus gave him a purpose, and that was more important than fishing alone. Do you think if Simon Peter would have ignored those instructions, that he would have found himself pulling more empty nets until he got the message? Friends, this, this all leads me to ask you, have you caught anything lately? In the quiet moments of the day, do you ever feel like you've spent your day hauling in empty nets? Are you going out on the water just to go through the motions of being productive at something without really trying to discern if what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing? Are you inviting God through prayer into your relationships with your family and friends if you've noticed he seemed missing? Are you ministering to others where you go, whether it's at work through your actions? Are you speaking positivity into people so that they will want to go out and do good things? Are you seeking opportunities to tend his sheep and feed his lambs? Or are you coming home and telling your family you've been boating just to justify why you didn't catch anything? Friends, the beautiful part in all of this is God loves us so much. It doesn't matter what we've done up until today. He called men like Peter, who got scared and denied him three times. And Peter wasn't perfect. Yet God took a common fisherman and turned him into the earthly head of his church. We have all done things we aren't proud of and need his forgiveness. And he willingly gives it to us. God is constant. His love is constant. It's a father's true love for his children. And he sent us his only son because he loves us so much and it doesn't stop there. He's sending you signs and strangers. It might just be a stranger on the shore asking you, have you caught anything? It's spring and it's warming up. Go fishing if you're able to sometime soon, from a boat, from a shore, and in those quiet moments, spend some time in prayer. Reflect on where your life is and where you are feel you are called to go. Is there something that you feel he has placed on your heart long ago, but you know it might be difficult, so you just keep it quiet and locked away and never put it into action? We hear at the end of our gospel Jesus alluding to how Peter would be crucified. Following him isn't always easy. It doesn't bring happy, always peaceful moments. 
Maybe you're supposed to create a community garden and feed his lambs and sheep. Maybe you're supposed to share through music something that brings people closer to God. Whatever it might be, invite him into those reflections. Invite him into your decision-making process. And if you're looking for him, if you actively listen for his voice and guidance, you might just find he's been there all the time, just waiting for you to say, I love you, and I will follow you where you lead. And if you follow him, when your time on earth is about over, you'll have the best <coughs> tales to share about all the fish you caught. But they won't be fish tales. They'll be true. <coughs> Friends, if you'll stand with me and let us say together our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now let us raise our voices together again, but in song, and sing hymn number 394, Just a Closer Walk with Thee.
and at this time we'll come forward and we will take up our tithes and offerings. Dear Lord, we ask your blessing over these gifts freely given, the gifts of our monetary gifts, our time, our talents, and of this bread that our loving children have made to be part of our service today. We ask that it feeds our souls so that we can go out and feed your lambs and feed your sheep. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when the risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good. And you made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us. And even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. So now let us sing together our holy, holy, holy. great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. 
Christ will come again. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, these gifts of your bread and wine, that they may nourish our body and blood, the Christ that we may have, may have his body in world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until the feast with him, with all your saints, in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor of yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given to you, do this in remembrance of me. body of Christ broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant, sealed in blood, and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus until he comes.
My friends, this is the cup of salvation. C.S. Lewis was once noted to say, I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking and sleeping. It doesn't change God, it changes me. My friends, we've come to the part of our service where we ask God for the blessings and we praise him for our joys. Would anyone like to share a joy or concern this morning? Janet. Our friend, Mark Stover, is very ill right now. He's bad cold, oh. and it sounds to me like it's going to be her sons. Okay. She, you know, she has, she's almost 80 years old, and she has the most beautiful voice for a person that age. And that's what she really worries about, is how her throat's going to be affected. So uh, we need your prayers for her, please. Definitely, we will pray for Mark. And her speedy recovery. <laughs> Do we have any other joys and concerns today? Yes. The uh, Matthews family. The Matthews family. Thank you. People of Ukraine. Thank you. And enjoy. He did a nice job. Thank you. Um, I just give all the glory to God. I couldn't have done this without him. Any other joys and concerns? Yes. Joy in a life well lived. Oh. By Anne Grace. By Anne Grace. Thank you. Yes, Harriet. I give thanks that my daughters were able to visit together. Uh, we haven't been together since way before the COVID started. And it was a very great privilege and honor, and we really enjoyed it. That's great. Visits with family. Yes. Um, Carolyn Larry. Carolyn Larry. Blessing of the kids. The kids. I can't tell you enough. Um, what a blessing it is that the kids were able to participate in such an important way today and bring the bread forward. That made it all the more special. So thank you, kids. Any other prayers from the people? Um, I do want to make sure I recognize our people who have birthdays this week. We have Brad Wright today, Dan Sexton on Monday. Where is Danny? Danny's, Danny's birthday's on Tuesday. He's been telling me, happy birthday, Danny. And Lori Mahaffey on Friday. And then we wish a very happy anniversary to Dale and Joyce Snyder on Saturday. So let's please, if we could, sing happy birthday. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in unity with your Holy Spirit, that we may sh go forth with the, your gifts in this world. But we ask your blessing all over those we have shared today who may be ill. We thank you for lives well lived. We thank you for the family and friends we have with us still and have so many more, hopefully, good memories to make and that we will take the opportunity to do so. We ask your blessing over the people of Ukraine. It is a troubled part of the world and there are many who want nothing to do with it. We ask that you help bring them peace 
and that we listen for whatever ways we can help through our prayers and other contributions or in active service to help those in need. We thank you for the gifts of all the people here today, those who are with us and watching at another time. We thank you for our beautiful children. They are some of the greatest gifts we will ever know. We ask that you will help us live boldly and go out in this world and use all these beautiful gifts you've given us. We ask this in your name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all stand as you are able and sing together hymn 119, please. said and done that your nets are full and you have caught the mother load. Go forth in peace. <laughs>